Hello, I'm Caitlin Smith and we have Nicole Andrews here at the 13th floor, which I'm really excited about because I was just walking by with my my keyboard stands and here we are. <laughs> are you touring a new album? It's yeah, I, yep. My new album is called A Stranger. It's my second album. So, cool. And it's electronic, <gasps> so. <laughs> How easy was that difficult second album? Uh, it was very difficult, let's just say that. <laughs> How long has it taken? Um, it took... It t I, I wrote it about two years ago, well, almost exactly two years ago, and uh, it, production, I wrote the whole album in three months, actually. It was wow. a period of really um, in intensely focused um, inspiration, and um, it all just kind of flew together. I had 20 songs by the end of the three months, and, oh. um, and then okay. I recorded it, started recording, a few months later, and um, that went on for quite a while. I recorded at um, Rhombus Studios with Thomas Voice, and uh, we kind of took our time between each stage to really uh, hear how it sounded and you know make the adjustments as needed. Like, mm. no, that guitar doesn't work, or mm. definitely needs whatever instrument. We'll write strings for this. I didn't write the strings; he did, but. Um, Wow, it's yeah. got strings. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. I mean, 20 songs in three months. I'm hella impressed by that. That's yeah. absolutely amazing. It was all I did. <laughs> well, I worked as well. <laughs> really? Yeah. You could hold down a day job and write that much? Yeah, I went to the day job, yeah. <laughs> and then wow. at night, I just stayed up until I was done writing. But it was just really, it just all kind of came to me. Because, you know, my first album was piano. And um, this one uh, is synthesizer folk based yeah, yeah, and yeah, yeah. so um, you have to like approach the writing differently or I wanted to approach the writing differently as well so I kind of I don't know you just give yourself a new thing to play with and you and the songs were different things. as a consequence do you think yeah they're totally like the sound of my first album is totally different than the sound of my second album mm -hmm. um, someone told me once that you can listen to my second album and then see how the first album could have you know, you can start here and then go back and see how it mm. came to be. But if you start with the first album and you look at this, you wouldn't have never seen this coming. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Yeah. Are the songs different? Like I notice, you know, um, y you can develop electronica perhaps that you can't do if it's if it's acoustic. And, you know, you can build and build and build with the kind of beds that you're creating. Are you actually making the beats yourself as well? Uh, I didn't make these beats, no. For the demos, I did make a few beats like I gave some guidance to where I wanted some things but like they were just demos and I was honestly like doing it at like midnight and like just like, there's a beat <laughs> <You'll> <laughs> just throw it in like if I were to have um, been producing it myself I would have done uh, more uh, specific you, beats but Thomas produced the beats so. did you produce the first album yeah I did wow yeah so that must have been a beautiful relief to hand it over to someone else to produce the second yeah it was really nice um, and also, I trust his work, mm. so um, I knew that whatever he did was going to be good. Mumbles are great. Uh, yeah, and I've worked with him before, so I knew um, I knew what he was capable of, and you know, I just knew I could trust him. So, uh, yeah. I really want to hear a song. What are you going to play for us? Um, his first song is "Lovely Thing." Surprise! 
Wow, that was lovely thing. And I think I see the continuum with the gothic, because we were talking before about hair <laughs> yeah. and how I used to be a skinhead and yeah. you had a buzz cut given to you by your mum. Yeah. Um, yeah, and wore goth clothing. So maybe this is it. Maybe this is <laughs> harking back to the content. Yeah, well, it's kind of, I don't know, it's just my vibe as a person. <laughs> a is dark. It a darker vibe. Yeah, it's Have a dark Have you seen vibe. Melancholia by Lars von Trier? No, I haven't. Oh, great film. Okay. I, I fully, fully recommend it. Okay, cool. <laughs> yeah, so what brought you to New Zealand? Um, I originally moved here because of a relationship, but now I'm just kind of here. <gasps> Yay. <laughs> Thanks for staying. Yeah. You know, we have lots of imports. Yeah. In fact, Marty was an import to New Zealand. I know. Um, but not for I a relationship. Tell. No. Um, and I think it's a beautiful way to actually uh, increase the gene pool in New Zealand because, <laughs> you know, that can be a problem. Um, <laughs> I digress. So you're going to play us another song. I'm uh, going to hear some more. So oh, what's yep. this one? This one is Beg for More. Excellent. Here's Beg for More. Come for me this far 
Stop playing games with my heart I never wanted this to stand My blood is pumping peacefully And that was amazing. That was big for more. <laughs> that was really, I love that one because I actually noticed that um, Ruben was actually grooving on the back with the, with the extended <laughs> outro and those beats, they're super, super cool. I really love it. And also, um, I'm still, I'm gonna come back, I'm sorry, because I'm personally so well impressed with the fact that you actually had such a prolific output yeah. of 20 songs in three months and were able to hold down a day job. <laughs> 
Um, how did you kind of teach yourself? Are you interested in the whole analog synth thing, or? I am. I'm more interested in. I'm. I'm less interested in the geeky side of it as making the music and enjoying the music. Yeah. You know, like you kind of have to get into the geeky side of it if you're going to do electronic music, because that's how you make it. Yes. But. Um, yeah, I just like the sounds. It's got layer upon layer upon layer as yeah, well. I, mean, I like, I love yeah. that. I like being able to really just like dig in and see what I can do. And that's when I wrote this album. I was really like so different than writing piano, um, and I kind of just pushed to see what I could, uh, what I could do. Really, just try and do something different. Mm. I intentionally tried to make things different every step it's, of the way. It's so. Um, dense with stuff you know yeah. I love that and I mean it is um, it's interesting when I think of someone like a songwriter like David Gray um, and it wasn't until White Ladder where his um, drummer was actually programming a whole heap of stuff and introducing electronica that he really hit um, the mainstream and people started listening to him mm. but you go back to his early albums and it's very raw mm. and it's very you know sort of more I guess what you could say singer songwriter focused yeah. but I guess what happens with with electronica is you get so much more color and texture yep. and all those layers which I'm I, yeah I'm, I'm well impressed with I gotta yeah, say thanks. and that's what's the name of the album the album's a stranger a stranger and it's it, you're touring it. Are you actually going around many dates in New Zealand? Uh, the tour is over as of today. <gasps> oh. <laughs> How many dates was it? Uh, four dates. Um, so it's like a tourette, really. Yeah. Yes. Tourette. I got I got some big but places. But without the swearing. Would you? Did you do the main centres? Was it? Uh, I did Wellington, Queen, uh, Christchurch, well Littleton, and um, <gasps> Queenstown, and then Auckland tonight. Where was Little Tim? Where did you play there? Wonder Bar. Nice. Yeah. What's left? Because I, I, one of my favorite venues, I mean, two of my favorite venues were, were lost in the earthquake. Oh, and no. Little Tim really, really did suffer. Yeah. Real bad. And you're based in Wellington, which must have yeah. fantastic yeah. music. I mean, like, yeah. I, as an Aucklander, I kind of dream of the <laughs> music scene in Wellington. Oh, yeah. yeah. I mean, I love Wellington. It's where I'm choosing to live, really, out of anywhere in the world. I could go anywhere, and I'm yeah. in Wellington. So. And you're from Portland. And I'm from Portland, yeah. And I could go back to Portland, but don't tell my family I'm still here. <laughs> oh, wow. Well. Okay, you can just sh yeah, keep it a secret. I yeah. think they just uh -huh. want me to come back, but I'm, I'm pretty happy in New Zealand, so, yeah. That is very surprising to me. I'm sorry. I mean, like, I, I, my sister lives in Portland. I love Portland as yep. a city. Mm -hmm. I mean, what, what was, I mean, so you say it's a relationship. That's a very tangible and, and noble reason to come to the other side of the world. Yeah. Um, but, you know, what, I mean, Portland is so wonderful. We have great Kiwi bands, U, U, UMO, who are um, yep. based over there as well. Yeah. And, and oh, so many other wonderful artists in Portland. I mean, I mean maybe I'll go back one day, but I don't foresee it so <laughs> I'm wonderful? pretty happy here <laughs> oh my gosh we'll probably have more of an influx what with some um, current political climate we'll probably have yeah exactly political exactly. refugees <laughs> um we have time enough for another song I hope what yep. have you got uh this song is called bass player and why is it called bass player is it based on a specific uh, bass player uh it is based on a bass player <laughs> you're not gonna name names no Okay, that's fine. <laughs> it makes me so curious. Now I'm really going to listen to the lyrics. Yeah. Thank you so much. <laughs>